Oh, I got his ass now. You have to be fast in the track. I hate that guy. Drunk quick. Change the rest of your life. My bottle got stretched a little bit. I got a tight little butt. I'm about to light this shit up. Mike Day is about to light the shit up, dude. So the Safiso, like on my end, when Safiso comes on the intro, it gets kind of cut off. So all, all I hear is, could change the rest of your life. <laughs> really? That's all you get to hear? <laughs> there are some, He's there just going to come change the rest of my life. <laughs> there are some weird glitches in there that I don't understand where they come from. Like there's at one point, it just like, there's a quick little pause and it keeps going. I don't know where it comes from, but. I know, I know. So. Um. We're on Chatter Radio 7 already. Sick. So, uh, yeah, we'll still be back for another week of uh, Coffee Chatter Radio. Um, we we'll to discuss a few things tonight, a couple debates, a couple social media check-ins. Got some big news in the BMX world. And we're officially in the, uh, the month of the grants. Can't believe November's here already. Dude, it seems like the pandemic just fucking hit. We're in March still somehow. It's unbelievable how this year has gone, how like it feels like it's been like two years in one year, but also feels like this year has just gone by like so fast. We haven't done anything this year. I mean, like it feels <laughs> like the last grands race was a little while ago. And now we got, you know, Sibby Mex grands coming up again. So it, it's nuts. Absolutely nuts. It's one of those times that it feels like being in the year feels like a long time ago, but at the same time, it feels like we're still there. I don't know how to explain it. I know, I know exactly what you mean. You can't explain it, but I know exactly what you mean. Um, thanks to ProGate Europe, winning starts the, I mean, not a good gate, it starts with a great gate on uh, ProGate Europe, get yours today. Absolutely starts with a great gate. And you know, we always, you know, we find those riders that have great gates. Well, I was thinking about it because we have a little, we have a segment coming up with, uh, with Tuan today, got him to send us a voicemail to drop, but he has got quite the ProGate set up on that new Supercross Hill he, uh, he's got going on. That may be the sickest that's, you can't, that's the sickest gate setup I've ever seen. Anyone in BMX has ever had. You oh, literally, you can't beat it for no. a gate setup. You can't. It's, it's, it's the same as Tokyo too, right? Oh, yeah. I, I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure. Um, I can't remember if he said in the voice memo. We'll get to that later in the show. But I'm pretty sure he even brought in, is it Thomas uh, Hamon who did the track build there? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he brought him in to build it, like as identical as he could. That's so, that's fucking insane. That's so cool that Red Bull did that for him and uh, unbelievable fucking setup like it's so cool to have your own first straight granted he can go to the track and ride but it's so much better to set your own track you do whatever you want you can literally just dial in your gates com- completely in just one little area no distractions you can dial in the first jump no distractions rest of the track like it's insane how much you can just focus on such a specific area when you have your own setup to do that on your own with <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because we're not, obviously we're not in that huge budget sport. So this is kind of foreign to us to have like a personal setup like that, but it's not anything out of the, out of the blue or different to other sports, you know, like a high level pro sports. Um, the guys have these kinds of setups at home where they can just do whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Cause I mean, you look at other sports, you look at motocross. So some of those guys basically have to build a track in the backyard to train. I know nowadays they have like uh, commonly used facilities that people own, but like back in the day, Carmichael had his own track that he'd build. Reed had his own facility that he used. We don't really have that because you're right. We're not a high, high uh, budget sport. People don't have the money to do that. BMX tracks, tracks cost a, a lot of money. Um, so yeah, it's cool to see something different. Uh, before, be- before we continue, um, I realized this is a live show. We got to post a number for people to call in because the phone lines are indeed open. The phone lines, you're right, are open. That is uh, updated, I think, by um, my YouTube page, unfortunately. I put it into the YouTube, though. So if you guys are listening, you want to call in on FaceTime audio, it's 778-866-7674. So give us a call. 
ask us a question. If you got an opinion on what we're talking about, we'd love to hear. We'd love to discuss it with you. So it's 7, yeah. 7, 8, 8, 6, 6, 7, 6, 7, 4, right? That'd be correct. I hope it's correct. Oh, baby. Um, yeah. Is there any way for us to post at the top of the chat? You know, you would, I would think so. I would think so. We did, we did that before, didn't we? We did. Um, we did. I, I just posted it. Um, but yeah, if we can post at the top of the chat, that'd be best. Um, gotta be, there's gotta be a way to like, someone's got to know, how do you, oh, yeah, so chat, live chat. No, no, live chat. That's live chat. And we need not, we need a tech person because trying to do this, but while everything's going on, but, I feel like I'm, I, I don't understand what's happening. You know, it's crazy though. Like the highest income sport, like one of the highest income sports F1, those guys hardly ever actually drive. R right. It's That's something nuts. so nuts. You're right. It's so, so nuts. nuts. Like they just do the simulators and they have their whatever specific testing days where all the teams get test. Otherwise, dude, they don't even drive. It's like, can you imagine that if all you can do is let's say, let's say you can even do uh, like gates on the street. You can only do gates on the street. And the only time you get to actually touch the real track and actually touch a track is the scheduled like week of preseason testing you get or the race. Yeah, I know. I wonder how accurate the simulators are. The simulators must be pretty close. You got to think at this point in, in life that because video games are insanely accurate and insanely live, insanely just like, um, what am I trying to say here? Yeah, yeah, the, like the graphics yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah, the graphics are very much realistic and whatnot. Yeah. So you got to think that the simulators are pretty advanced these days because if that's all they get and they drive as well as they do, I mean... Is the simulator is the simulator the same as the game as like a video game console? It might be a dumb question, but is it the same? Oh, great question! I bet you it's like a video game console on steroids. I know they have like their multiple <laughs> screens, but you're right. I don't I don't know how do they what kind of like they got to have some kind of downloaded software to be able to have the exact track and whatnot, and then obviously the equipment to make it feel realistic, like the seats, like the pressure of the pedals and whatnot. You can't just have like those loosey goosey PlayStation pedals you buy from best buy you know <laughs> imagine the first day i got like a uh, uh, winter testing or whatever they must feel like they're in a fucking rocket ship <laughs> yeah, Just, you know like weird. even in bmx i know like you know you, you race the last world cup and say whenever it is september october and then you don't usually touch supercross again until i don't know the new year say the first mm -hmm. time you hop back on supercross in the year that it feels so fast like i the hill always seemed a lot bigger even if you're off it for like three months you get up to the top, you just look at the view, you're like, whoa. Like, you're like, oh, you're <laughs> like weird. Yeah. You're like, holy shit, this thing's tall. And you go, like, the jumps feel like they're coming at you super fast. Yeah. No, that's huge. Yeah. Cause when you, when you're only riding small tracks, or even when you take some time off and you get back on that big track, you're moving. Like, you don't realize sometimes how fast you're moving, how fast things are going by your face and whatnot. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, no, it's pretty crazy. Um, speaking of which, the USA BMX just dropped their uh, uh, build for the grants this year. I took a look at it when it came out. I haven't seen it since. Uh, I should go check on it so I can give my formal opinion. But what were your thoughts on it? It looks all right. I mean, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It looks like it has a decent first straight. It's always so hard to tell by the, by like the computerized photo or whatever, how kind of long the straightaways are actually going to be. True. Yeah. Big time. Because yeah. it, it's weird, but like at the, at the grounds, the stadium so big, but typically they have, they don't use a lot of the space for the first straight which mm -hmm. I've always, I've always wanted them to really stretch out the first straight. And some years they've had, they, they have done that. It's been awesome. Mm -hmm. Other times they've left so much room behind the gate. They've used like half the space for the first straight. Um, but that track has so much potential. They have such a good amount of space on the ground. Um, good first straight. Looks like they had a pretty good pro section. Um, yeah, the track looks like they'll be pretty good, I think. Do you like it when they do something unique and kind of like out of the ordinary? Because I'm a fan of that. How out of the ordinary are we talking? Um, like when they randomly throw in like the the, de the decision maker straights, which I know are no for pros, it's normal. Ams, it's decision maker, but pros is always just pro line. But then they had like one year, it was five straights. Um, yeah. They had the random like pro set where you cut back, which isn't out of the ordinary, but it's definitely <laughs> different when you have a pro set on the, the uh, we'll call it the inside. We have to cut back to the straightaway, things like that. They always just do it a little different, I feel like, or try to make it exciting somehow. I find pro sections on the inside work when it's a sweeper first corner. So I think if you notice all the times they do that, it's usually because of a sweeper corner and it's not a big deal because you have so much time to pedal out and come back. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, like, if you're on the sweeper, it's hard to, it's hard for the pros and be able to get back. 
Yeah. What I'm a big fan of actually, and I think more tracks should do, it'd be super cool. And like World Cups would be cool is a split last straight. Really cool mm -hmm. idea. I've raced, there's been a few grand tracks like that. And the one side, like the outside's amateur. Yeah. Um, yeah. The amateur last, and then the inside you have like a mini pro section. It's kind of tech. Yeah. Um, it's super cool. Like the guy in second will just send the pro section and try and pass the guy in first or whatever. Um, oh, or if you're like fifth in a semi. Yeah, to try and kind of, you know, get away from the pack and whatever. I think it's really cool. And it makes makes the last straight super exciting because especially on normal tracks, it's so hard to pass the last straight. Mm -hmm. But if you if you make like a little decision maker, it really opens things up. It's cool. And then the, the people get into it when someone decides to, to peel off and go to the inside or like if Elise or Brooke or one of those girls needs to send it or something, it, it's pretty cool. I get abs absolutely hyped when you just see, we were watching the AM classes and you see that one person or even the, the women too, when you see that person just dart for the pro set when nobody else is and you're like, you know, it's quicker if they get it right, but it's hard for them to do it, the full section properly. And you're just like, come on, just like, let's get it. Come on, come on. And you're just, yeah, it's super cool. Off. It's so exciting. Yeah. yeah. So I like, uh, I think something like that's cool, especially, um, at a, track, at a race like the grand just to build some more excitement. Yeah. So that, that's kind of something that I'm talking about when it's like unique and different because that kind of stuff excites me. Yeah, I don't like I don't like gimmicky shit. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm fine with adding something special or something cool to the track for some flair. I always find a hard time uh, getting on board at Grands with the, the berm jump for the sole reason that when it's a dirt track like that and it's just the pros riding that, that berm jump, you get a single file track through the turn normally and it's the, the turn doesn't get used like a normal turn unfortunately you can't make the moves because everything stays a little softer no oh, i never even thought about that to be honest but it, yeah it's true there was um, for my my example in my head that i was thinking of was 2012 i think it was um there was a pro set berm jump going into the last turn and then coming out was just that one little tiny jump unfortunately so it wasn't really <laughs> I a thought that, it's funny i thought that layout was so cool I love the layout until that berm jump. And then it was like, well, nobody's going to try to make a move in this turn. And then there's no straightaway for anybody to make a move after anyways. So as long as you stay oh. in, in the, the blue groove, you're fine. Oh, really? I thought that's straight. I thought it was so cool. I loved that berm jump. I thought the like, how last straight was kind of a mini pro section. I thought it was super cool. There was no pro. It was one jump. I, I just I saw the did this the other day. Yeah, it was no, just the last, one. the last straight was two doubles. And then maybe it's 2011. Whatever year there was a berm jump into the last turn, it was yeah, yeah. It's it's it was 2012, but no, I, I actually just watched it. I think it was, was it two sure doubles. It was two. Yeah, it was two. Okay. Did anybody do any passing on that last train? It's funny. I, <laughs> I passed. I passed Connor on the last turn of the main on the first, and they passed it back like over the last jump. Well, this just blows my my idea right out of the water. <laughs> I'm talking about there being no passing, and then there's obviously passing. It was. A, I thought that one was super cool. Um, I love that track design because it was yeah. kind of sweeper first turn, and then it was the decision maker down the the second straight that was kind of dog leg. Yeah. And then out of the second turn, that was a good sprint. But I always felt like this that last turn there was only one line through it. Yeah, that track was super cool. Um, great. That was a great first straight on that. Track. Yeah, there's been some good ones too. Like 2013 was on with five straightaways. That one was good too. Huge. That was a really good one too. Yeah. Yeah. Had a Long big pro section. Right yeah. Yeah. Had a big pro section, the second straight, legit rhythm section. They need so much room to pass anywhere. Yeah. Or so much opportunity to. So I'm seeing on this track map map for this year. Um, the, Kawasaki, the Kawasaki track map. Kawasaki track map. Where's the little arrow that does all the jumps and does the cool <laughs> whips mid air? One of those ones. I like the uh, second, third straightaway. It looks like a long rhythm section, which huge fan of over here at Coffee Chatter. Mm -hmm. Big rhythm section, guys. Huge rhythm section company yeah. over here. <laughs> the second straight looks awesome, too, with a bunch of pro jumps. Hopefully, they're built nicely for the guys. But for first straight, tabletop and roller, not my not my go-to. No. 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 Yeah. The I first love jump, it goes, goes tabletop roller, then like step up or something? Yeah, then I would call it like a, st a step table, kind of. I saw Sam post it on the USADMX photo, take out the roller and you have a really good first straight. I agree. Like, make, like really let it, let the boys eat. Yeah. I would love to see, take the roller out. I would love, I love camelbacks for a first jump on the ABA round. Yes. Or like yes. something to give, give the guys an opportunity to throw in a double pedal manual. Throw some uh, in there. Talk dirty to me. I and love a good camelback. Right. So good. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. So good. Like it's just the best. Like you get rewarded for being able to do a sick double pedal manual. It's so uh, when you get it right too, man, you are just motoring. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I was, as, as a kid, I could never do it very well. I was terrible at that slow speed being able to do that double manual, double pedal manual. And nowadays it just seems like it's not there. And I just want to bring it out so bad. 
I know. I, I love good pal man. I got a good post this week for pal man. I'm going to post Thursday. Right on. Speak of the, speak of the devil. But yeah, it's a, so pal man is a huge scale, especially at US BMX tracks. Like most first jumps, you pretty much have to pal man or else you're going to get dropped. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So it's a big skill. And, Underrated uh, skill too. It is definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's like one of those skills, like you said, because we we're so focused in the elite class, so focused on supercross, we're not worried about that skill too much anymore, which it's a good skill to have when you have to be on these small hills going for a title. You know, it's a sick jump to double pedal manuals. The first jump at the Chile ABA track, the step double. Oh, that jump's awesome. Oh, it's so good. So there are good. so many fast lines you can do over that. Like, cause you can keep it so simple and be so fast. Or if you get aggressive and be greedy with like a pull double pedal, you, you can sneak it in there and get an extra like wheel in there sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You can literally do like, you go pump manual. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's seriously so fast. It's annoying sometimes. That I know. Fast line. Cause I ended up doing that. I remember cause I was like, this is so fast and so easy. Why am I trying to do this pull double pedal every time and like get it half the time? I know when we, when we first went there and in 2016, in 2017, we were staying there for a while. Nick was doing the sickest double pedal nails. I was like, oh, I need to get on this. And I practiced it a bunch and I, I could just do it every time. And it feels so sick. It's just so good. It's such a good, such a good feeling when you can get that. Yeah. Um, I saw you have the, you mentioned you had the voice memo from Twine. You want to play that now? We do. Yeah, we do. So we can play that now. We had, um, we had a few people. I had at least two people message me just asking about Twan Supercross Hill. They wanted to hear a little more about it. Didn't want to be speaking for him without the knowledge. So we got a, got a voice memo from Tuan we're going to play here. Um, just describing what his Supercross Hill is all about from, from him. Here we go. It, it was, I think, April this year where uh, the whole COVID situation was getting bigger and bigger. And yeah, it looked like a real pandemic. Uh, Pandemic. Pandemic, too? <laughs> Pandemic. Only... Yeah. Got a Pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I was just checking in with uh, <laughs> with my assistant. <laughs> um, well, when the whole pandem pandemic uh, was getting more serious, uh, Red Bull asked me a question uh, about, is there anything we can do to help you uh, prepare for the Tokyo uh, Olympics? And I told them about the, the World Championships last year with the preparation I had there. And it looked uh, more or less ideal to, yeah, uh, fly up and down to Tokyo for in, uh, three times a week, but that's just not possible. And then they told me, uh, if, it's not, uh, if that's not possible, um, can't we bring the track to here? And it was more or more less of a joke, but at the end, uh, I got a call day, a day later uh, about um, if I was serious about that uh, part of uh, making a replica of the first trade in Tokyo. And from there on, I went to the to the province and sat down on the, uh, at the table with the, with the people there. And they want to co cooperate, uh, yeah, with the with the whole thing. And now, three months later, uh, it's done. It's there, it's working, and I can train my ass off uh, like ten minutes from my home. So it's like a boy dream came true. And yeah, <clears throat> I hope to to get the results out of it uh, that I want. And um, yeah, of course, um, who paid it? Um, it's a cooperation between me, Red Bull and, and Shimano. So uh, yeah, you know who paid for it. <laughs> uh, there you go. Good to hear from TVG. Um, before we comment on it, people are messaging me saying they tried to call it, it's not working. Is the phone open or is it? Is it yeah, it's is open. It? All right. Um, um, Call back people. Sure. Um, I hope it works. Maybe maybe we got to buy the Telus thing again. Well, if it's on it's on Wi-Fi. It should face some audio. Should work. You would think. One yeah. would think. Yeah. Face some audio people. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty sick. I can see Tuan winning the Osha. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, hundred percent. Especially 
first of all, it's hilarious that they're like, well, you know, if you can't go to Tokyo three times a week to, to practice on the track, well, then I guess we'll make one here. <laughs> we got a caller. All right, caller one. All right. Yeah. All right, caller number one, you're live on Coffee Chatter. Who are we speaking to? What's going on, boys? It's Mitchy. Oh, Mitchy, it's been too long, bro. I, I know, mate. It's, I'm back with the weekly check-in from Australia. Yeah, we need our weekly uh, Mitchy Aussie check-in. Oh, my headphones just can't run the fucking thing. One yeah. sec, don't say I'm anything. Sorry. I can't hear you. Now I'm back. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's the latest, bro? So, Ben, um, we got the all from BMS Australia and BMX Victoria to open the tracks and we can go and practice tra and train now. Oh, that's right really on. So, um, that's really good. Um, it's better for the mental health side of things and everything. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, um, more, more importantly, how did the project go you did on me? <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Um, I got a A for it. Oh, oh, boy. There it is. Of course yeah. he did. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> when you do um, want to try, so you could I'll, not, right? You I mean, how could yeah. you get anything else than an A? I <laughs> know. Oh, and they loved it. Like when you told about um, getting your spleen taken out and all that stuff. And they're like, what? How? <laughs> this guy's fucking like, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, this guy's nuts. Like, he's so good. But yeah, I'll have to uh, get to you. Yeah, that's cool, bro. Uh, man, I'm stoked to have, uh, to have helped you. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you're starting to uh, get into ride again, too. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's really good because um, it's been like six months now. We haven't been racing or training. Yeah, that's really yeah. tough. Now that's it's really tough. Uh, going back into the new season for 2021 and start training up for that. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Um, yeah. We're just talking about the – Mitchie, we're just talking about the grants because it's a one – it's a one-shot deal. It's three mains, but it's a one-shot deal for the title. Who, who do you yeah. got? Oh. oh. Put, them on, put them on on the spot, huh? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I have to go Wait, you... CF. CF11. Yeah. He, yeah. He'll yeah. yeah. That's Him Mitchie's boy. Yeah. That's Mitchie's guy right there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, put, my, I put my money on Connor, too, for sure. That's, yeah. that's a very safe bet. Who'd you go, James? Hard and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna. Yeah, for me, it's just you take Joris or you take Connor. I'm going Joris. Oh, Mitchy just said Connor, so we got to have like a little duel here. I mean, we, we none of us none of us factored in Corbin who could easily win it. So you're gonna yeah, take Corbin? <laughs> Three way no, duel. No, I, I think Connor's gonna win, but like Corbin could easily not easily, but he could definitely go win. I mean, he's been horsing there before, yeah. 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 Columbia this might, this might race in USA. The Colombian boys, yeah, I saw them there up there doing the USCBMX stuff, doing some of the pro am yeah. in Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've That's seen Carlos. Awesome. He's uh, yeah, he's been race, or racing Florida and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he's looking for Carlos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Magician. It's gonna be, it's gonna be yeah. good to watch. Yeah. Well, uh, good to yeah. hear from you, bro. Thanks for the check-in. You too, bro. Now, good. Catch you, boys. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, thanks for listening, buddy. We'll talk soon. Yeah, we'll see. Bye. Later. Mitchie, everybody. Thanks for coming. Like, Mitchie, I don't have the sound thingy right now, but thanks for coming. I like our, uh, I like our uh, little uh, Mitchie Aussie check-ins. That's really, I, you know, it's nice to hear from him. He's he our guy. Our, he's, he, he's our guy. He could be our Aussie correspondent. Yeah, he's our, our Aussie correspondent. I like <laughs> He's that. our Aussie coffee chatter correspondent. <laughs> We get our news once a week or every couple of weeks. We get our quick little bit of news on what's going on in the BMX world in Australia. I like it. Um, want to do the goat debate? You want to throw it in there? This is heavy. People might, yeah, people might want I, to call in about this. I had this written in my phone for the past two weeks. We were going to do it last show, yep. but I just went on to read other stuff and whatever. Yeah, bring we it on. Had, so, we had Sylvan on. Fuck that guy. But um, so right. we'll do it now. Are you shitting me? Oh, what? I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking just press, just press them all. You'll get it eventually. I hate that guy. <laughs> so I, I thought of this because as LeBron just won the NBA Finals, people obviously on the internet were going nuts and debating. Some people were saying LeBron's the greatest of all time. And then Jordan fans were highly opposed to that, saying highly, you know, uh, highly. highly against <laughs> that, saying, you know, Jordan's the best of all time. I'm personally not a basketball fan. 
So yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't really give a shit, but it got me thinking about BMX. Who's the goat of BMX? And the biggest comparison would be Sam Ramirez. So here, do you want my answer first? Do you want, I'll oh, just, let me just drop my answer and then we can get into explaining, but somebody's calling in T. Oh yeah, call it Let's Answer the call. Here we go. Caller number two, you're live on air with Coffee Chatter. Who are we speaking to? Oh, good day, guys. It's the second Australian guy calling you today. It's Brendan. How are you? What's up, Brendy? How you doing? It's our, it's our second. It's our Aussie Canadian correspondent. Aussie Canadian <laughs> correspondent. <laughs> right. That's right. How's it going, Brendy? I saw the uh, the tracks have closed now in Ontario for the for the winter, huh? Well, it snowed today, but listen, we got a we got a week of twenty degrees coming up for some reason, so we might get out again. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's super bitching. <laughs> No, it's not it was, uh, it and two days later, it's 15, so. Unreal. Dude, Unreal. I've seen some of the weather in, like, Alberta and stuff. looks fucking terrible. Yeah, yeah that's Alberta, though. <laughs> that's why we live in BC and not there. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh. I'd rather be in Ontario than Alberta with that weather. Sure. <laughs> it was, uh, it was a cool 25 here today. Yeah, you can, you can just screw right off. <laughs> <laughs> it rained, it's oh, rained gotta- one day. It's rained one day since I've been here. Of, um, I got a couple of things for you guys, a couple of golf things and a couple of bike things. Um, oh, hit us with it. So the Masters is next week. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. It is. <laughs> I, yeah. So I have a, I have a, I'm curious for your picks, boys, for next week. We well, did, are we talking one guy or like three guys or what? Three guys. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just pick the winner, you mean? Not like... Pick three guys. Again. Never mind. So, <laughs> never mind. So they're here nor there. One guy. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, just, I, I actually. I just die. Yeah, I actually earlier this year I picked him, and I'll stick with him. I think Cantley's gonna win. Ooh, really? Yeah, because he's he hits it straight. He's really precise with his irons, and he's a really good putter. And Augusta, you have to putt really well, and you have to be really accurate with the irons because the greens are just diabolical. Yeah, fair. All right, if I if I'm guessing, if I'm voting with my heart, I would go with Tiger because Tiger is Tiger, and I love Tiger, and I'm on a, all on board the Tiger train. But my other guy that I love cheering for, and I actually I might I have my pick in. I'll pick Justin Thomas. Yeah, I mean JT. Yeah, he's playing well. Yeah. What about you, Brendan? Brendan, who you got? This is a lock, and I want you guys to write this down. Xander Shoffley is going to take. The, oh. He's going to win. He's going to win the Masters. Yeah. He's looking. I would like, think, yeah, yeah. He's been looking sharp him. lately. I listen to him on the four play pod. I, I yeah. like his attitude. I like his personality. He's got a good shot. You're right. Yeah. Yep. I was. I. I, I think uh, Cantley, Shoffley. I think Patrick Reed can win it too. He's been playing well. He's good there. True. Yep. True. Yep. Yep. Um, on on another golf note i did shoot a 75 last week which didn't quite get me into the masters but i i would say like within the next five to ten years i'll be i'll maybe have a shot at it similar to tory that's legit yeah it is that is yeah i think you guys are going to be going to the masters together with those kind of scores dude you must you must have been firing at pins yeah, I, I didn't tell you how hard the course was, but it's really irrelevant. It's just, it's just, <laughs> so, didn't tell us it was a pitch and putt par three. Doesn't doesn't matter. Matter. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You still, you got to get the ball in the hole. Like that little path, two course outside Papandale. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and a couple, couple little BMX things. I'm a bit annoyed with Tori. Uh, his training has been lacking. He sends. I sent him the invoice yeah. for the, the coaching he, and he pays the bill, but he doesn't do any of the training. So I'm not expecting a whole lot of um, <clears throat> performance out of him coming up. Yeah. In a couple of weeks. This, uh, the appendix really, you know, took the wind out of my sails and into Tulsa this morning. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, are you worried about 7,600 people in a building <laughs> in Oklahoma? No, nah, should be good. Should be good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just a filthy cesspool. Oh boy, man, it's unbelievable. You just leave like places like that in Reno and stuff. You just leave feeling like you have the black lung. Straight up. <laughs> um, and the last thing, well, two two quick things. Um, the, you, my vote for the goat has got to be Sam. Okay. And um, 
let the girls race. I, I don't know um, Ariel, Ariel Martin very well, but um, I read her post that Molly, uh, yeah. that Molly retweeted or re-Instagrammed or whatever. And, um, you know, I worked with Molly for a while and, um, you know, those girls are as fierce and as competitive as, as any girls I've ever seen in the sport. And obviously I know that, you know, sometimes we want to develop them the right way, but honestly, like I know so many people raced pro at 15, 16, 17, and, and it didn't hurt the top riders. So I just say, let them race. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into that as well this show, but yeah, I agree. A thousand percent agree. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. Thanks for Good the call, chat. Brandy. Good to hear from you. Thanks for calling in, Brandy. See you guys. Later. See ya. Brandon Arnold, everyone. I love a good Brandy chat. Gotta love Brandy when he calls in. Yeah, I love how the Aussie guys call in, right? I know. I lo- we're, we're sneaky. Like, I was looking at our analytics. We're sneaky big in Australia. Oh, we really are. Sneaky yeah, big. Like, I like it. Our, we're sneaky. Like, our analytics city wise are sneaky big in Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, and those cities. Australia, huge BMX country. Yeah. Way so bigger than our Aussie. It gives them credit. Shout out to our Aussie listeners. Um, yeah. But yeah, right. the GOAT. Go for Back it. Back to the GOAT. So, my, my greatest of all time is Maris. My greatest racer, like fastest racer of all time, Sam. So, you know, when we're talking moto, we got the goat, we got Ricky Carmichael, but then we got, you know, like we got like the fastest guy on the planet earth. He was James Stewart, hands down. Well, that's what I'm getting at here. We got our goat. We got Maris. He's the greatest of all time. He's won two Olympic medals. He's won two world championship medals. He's got, um, close to the most world cup wins in history, minus Nick and Connor in this new era. And he's also got a USA BMX title. He's the greatest of all time. Yeah, I would agree. I would say Maris is the GOAT and greatest of all time. Obviously the two Olympics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the titles you mentioned. I wonder, looking at, t- looking at races, I bet Sam won more. I bet he won more races overall. And I think Sam was a better racer because Maris really only, you can't say only did it, but he only did it when he had a good gate with whole shot and stuff, more or less. Sam mm-hmm. could really do it from anywhere. There's a lot of race days where he hit the gate in the quarter and be in last and come back and make it and then win the day. And even if he was off or whatever, he found a way to still scrap out a podium or a win. Whereas mm-hmm. Maris didn't really, he's kind of just on or just kind of like off and wait for the next race. So I would say Sam was the best. I don't know. I'm sorry. Maris is the goat for sure. Greatest of all time, but I would agree. Sam is the best racer. I don't know pure speed. I think pure speed. I don't think anyone can compare with Maris when he was actually on. Pure I wouldn't, speed. I, I wouldn't like, have said Sam. Was, I wouldn't have said Sam was faster. I would think Maris is the fastest of all time too. Okay. I would think so. If we're talking down the hill, like I'd give it to Maris. Cause when his, when Maris was getting his fast starts, I think he was untouchable. In the sense yeah. that, like, that's why he circa, was the, circa circa Papa 2012 with Touring Seven continue circa that which we'll get to. We'll, we're going to get dive into a little bit deeper, um, but I just think speed around the track, the fierceness, the competitor, like he is. Sam was the fastest guy. I felt like how many times was he the guy that was going that fast where everyone's like, "This guy's going to win," and that meant like it just seemed like he was always going to win. I think Maris was a little more underdogish sometimes, where it's like. At least at the Olympics, he would go through kind of um, maybe maybe this is just 2012, but kind of go through a little bit under the radar, sneak his way in, and then pop it off and just be do what goat things do the goat thing where he just that, <laughs> that was that was 2012. I mean 2081 yeah. like every single lap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Sam was similar to Bubba. Like if you actually want not in the in the aspect that uh, like Sam's gates and first trades were much better. And the aspects that they would just fucking charge around the track. They had that bull-like mentality. And Dude, just like a charging rhino around like the track. Like if you saw them coming out of a turn, like in a video or like behind you, someone, you're like, they're about to eat that person alive. Yeah, I'd be more nervous with Sam behind me than Maris. Yeah. Sam, Sam would be really tough to hold off, but Maris like, would be tough, but I don't think as tough because he's not going to like, I mean, he's fast, but he's like, I don't know how to explain it. Like Sam could come from any angle and attack from any angle, Maris wouldn't. And that's why in my head, I feel like I say he's the greatest and fastest racer of all time. Because he did it multiple ways. Like he did it where he would whole shot, but he also did it where he would just look like a madman around the track. And just, he would stomp, stomp on the cranks out of a turn so hard that he would just charge by somebody like no big deal. 
on down the yeah. road away, yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And I, like I said, I think what really sets him apart as a racer is that he could do it like on an off day. If he wasn't feeling as good, if he wasn't as fast, if he was struggling, he never quit. Like you'd always grind it out. <clears throat> and there was a lot of races where he maybe wasn't at his best, but he still scratched out a podium or could still win, which shows how high his level actually was. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anyone ever dominated like gate to turn like Maris did. No, no, because you're right. Like the amount of his first rates were just unreal. You look at like the when they were when they were on, on, like it's fucking next level good. It is next level. You look back 2010 World Champs outside lane lane eight. Gets it down from the outside with heavy hitters on the inside. I'm talking oh, yeah. heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. Huge heavy hitters. And then obviously, yeah, let's talk about 2012, the gate in Papendal. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna debate here that it could potentially and quite possibly be the greatest gate in hill of all time. That was the greatest gate of all time, and I was just no one had a better view than I did. No one <laughs> had the opportunity to watch him stop those pedals like you did. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous that I was literally beside the greatest gate in history. You were well. I mean, you know, just take it for what it is. You get to be in that video. That's just going to be replayed for years on end. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, so we posted the video whatever two weeks ago. It, yep. Like, my gate was actually good, and it was fine with everybody else. Uh huh. You were fine. There was you nothing. Were... There was nothing wrong with it. If Maris didn't do that, I would have been fine. It would have been very, very much okay. I would have been very competitive with everyone else down the hill. Everyone else except this been... fucking miss, this <laughs> missile beside me came out of like me. You would have been able to shift. We're able to get through that gearbox like yeah. you do. But no, you had a missile in lane eight who somehow had made his second pedal look like he was on a 4016 <laughs> when really he was probably pushing a normal 4416, 4516, who knows, and just motored down the hill. The acceleration on that gate is fucking surreal. And we won't ever see that again. I don't think, like, if you really watch it, I don't even, there's not even any words to really describe how well he accelerated. No, I don't think there is. I don't know how to. Like, I don't, I would love to know that we could probably look it up. I'm sure Graf has the time. Someone's looked it up before, but I'd love to know the hill time on that. Um, it's hard to say, comp- you can't really compare it to, I guess, other years. Who knows what the wind, the weather, whatnot. But that's got to be like one of the fastest hill times ever there. It has to be. And I mean, oh. probably year after year as everyone's gotten faster, maybe it's gotten past but like that period of time comparison to everybody else. Yeah. Cause you can't, it's hard to compare five years later because the whole, everyone gets bigger, stronger, faster equipment gets better. Yeah. Um, we got a, we got a call, caller here, T. Caller number three. Okay. All right. Caller number three. You are, you're live on air with coffee chatter. Who are we speaking to? Oh, it's Justin wall from USA BMX. How hey, Justin. Doing? Justin, how you doing? Doing good guys. Hey, I wanted to get on, on this goat talk real quick. Oh, oh yeah. Talk to us. So, I think you guys are you spot on. I mean, Maris and Sam Willoughby can go hand in hand for, I think, the new school kind of Olympic era BMX racing. Mm -hmm. I want to split it up, though, because, I mean, just like basketball, I mean, Jordan was in a different league then. So kind of old school era. I think Todd Lyons has to get his name tossed in there, too. Okay. All right. You know, it's so hard. I just... I, I know obviously Todd Lyons and stuff, but I was I was just so young when he was racing and he probably started like I was just so young. So I don't really I honestly don't remember. I mean, yeah, he just I mean he was one of the first bad boys of BMX. I'm sure there is others, but he just brought so many eyes onto the sport and just bikes in general. I think we gotta toss his his name in the hat. Yeah, that's fair. Like, I'm the same with Tori. Like, I, I'm too young to, to get to watch. I'm sure there weren't many videos, but too young to kind of know his era, know what he did in the sport. And kind of the same thing with, I've heard Randy Stumphauser's name thrown into one of those guys yeah. all the time, but I was still not able to get, to get to watch him and get to understand just how good he was. So, yeah. And you definitely have to consider, like, someone like Bubba, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Bubba, 100%. I think... Yeah, yeah. Like... Again, another era, but like mid school, I think you know Bubba, Mike Day, Donnie. I mean, all of those guys can be can be tossed yeah. in. But I think you're spot on with Sam and, and Maris. Yeah, for sure. Like our generation is kind of new school era, Sam or new school era, Sam and Maris. And I think the kind of generation before, I would probably say Bubba was just because yeah. he could really make it happen from anywhere. He won maybe it tells you win like three or four, I think, plus the world championships. So for back then, like. I mean, what, what, what more can you really ask for? The, uh, the like the I mean, ABA, ABA circuit back then was was 
was everything, you know, and like to win it that many times against all those guys. Like Bubba was so good that I wrote like stories about him when I was in like elementary school. You had to do like a, write a story about your hero. Like Bubba was a hero back then. So it's, yeah, we've yeah. talked about it before. No one cheered as as loud as nobody they Bubba. Like he got the oh, most yeah. cheers at the track when he was racing out of everyone. He and would light up. he would light the arenas up. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Just a couple of years ago, I want to say twenty. 19 at uh, Phoenix. He came back for the vet race. Yeah. And everyone was lined up against the fence. It was, it was awesome. Just see this old retired pro, I mean, vet pro, but just getting everyone on the fence line. So it was still like, it was still like that with him. Huh? He still had that era or like that kind of oh, aura. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I mean, everyone knows the name Bubba Harris. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Well, Here's what we're going to do. On the, uh, the Instagram this week, we're going to put out, we're not going to put the poll because we don't have enough people that we don't have all of it. We're going to put in the question, new old school era goat, mid school goat, and the new school goat. We're going to see how many votes everyone yeah. gets for which riders. That's, and then. that's a good idea. Go ahead and we, we can make the link in there. I'll share those. hundred percent. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, we will. Thanks a lot, bro. Yeah, no problem. Hey, anyone going to the uh, NorCal tangent pro-am this weekend i'll be there i'll be racing if you want to see me be all sketchy and everything it'll be great um, <laughs> you guys have a great rest of your live show um loving these guys appreciate it thanks for calling in awesome Justin. thanks for tuning in bro appreciate it yeah, have a good one later you too buddy <clears throat> justin wall everybody usa bmx just an awesome dude awesome yeah. dude fan of the think, show friend of the I show think- I think it's a, he makes a good point. There's got to be a huge difference between calling the goats of the eras because so many people nowadays yeah. um, with technology of videos and whatnot, they don't know the old school guys, myself included, barely know the mid school guys, myself included. And then we really know the new school guys. I mean, it's just, it's, it's hard to like, it's impossible to compare because mm-hmm. like when Bobo was racing, um they didn't have supercross didn't have that so all their their main focus everything was on the apa series which was huge and bubble won. i don't know if it was three or four or i think he won three or four um plus he won the world championships as well so i think from that era i would say bubble was the was the goat you could obviously argue like bennett was and um i think bennett won three world championships if i'm mm-hmm. not mistaken um so it's kind of the same thing. I mean, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It depends what you value too, because you oh. can make the argument with Sam and Maris, like Sam won whatever. What, how many ABA titles did he win? Three or four? Something like that too. So Yeah, yeah. And he won the Worlds, what, twice in the league? Uh, are we talking about Sam? Sam, yeah. Yeah, twice. He, he won 12 and 14, yeah. So yeah. how many times did Maris win it? Twice? He won it twice as well. Yeah, we're China and uh, oh, South Africa. South Africa, yeah. Um, yeah, so you can make the same argument. It depends what you value. That's true. Yeah, it, it really does depend what you value. This kind of ties in a question uh, I saw on 15 BMX. Well, backstretch. Uh, backstretch. Oh, loosen that up. Yeah. Loosen that back up. This couch uh, is uncomf- uncomfortable as fuck. <laughs> like I've, i said it last time too. It just looked <laughs> like one of those things. It's just a prop. You never sit in that other than this show. It's just a prop there in the room. No, but why would anyone buy it? Stuff like <laughs> it's one of those coaches you just throw shit on just to have something to put. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, uh, so tying it into what I saw, this is a while back from 15 BMX. They're going off, which current pro brings the most value to the sport? Well, which, which pro do you think brings the most hype to the sport? So we're talking mid-school, like Bubba, he brought that hype. He was the guy. I, I can't speak for old school because like, I don't know that enough. Bubba was a mid-school guy, but who's the new school guy that brings this hype? I mean, it's Mariana, no question. You think so? Well, think about, think about the, the draw she brings to the sport. It's, it's insane. It, yeah, yeah. Like, I guess, that's not even, it's not even a question, I think. No, I, th- I think as I'm like kind of realizing in my head it's not. Go, who's number two then? Because you're like right. she's literally She's literally probably changed slash improved the sport single-handedly, brought more eyeballs on it than anybody else. Ever. Yeah, I mean, in South America, like, there's no, it's not even close. Not even close, yeah. Not even um, close. What about the rest of the world and other than Mariana? What do you think? Like, like in terms of, say, at the races, like, people really getting behind somebody. 
Yeah, let's go with that. Like, okay, let's yeah, go yeah. With what we think of as Bubba in our eyes back then at the races to who's that person now? I, I mean, Nick's pretty big worldwide in the sport for sure. Mm-hmm. I think people re- like he's really popular. Yeah. Uh, I think his YouTube presence is very worldwide. And yeah, yeah. Really like, I think hype to him because he wins so much, obviously. Yeah, so, like, he, yeah. I agree. Like, he's won a lot. He's in a country like Holland, which is big in BMX and sport in general. Plus, he's had a really good following on YouTube and like social media. He's done a good job with all that. But I think he's probably the most followed by kids and stuff, I would say. And yeah. probably most, yeah, like he's just a really nice guy, obviously. Like, he's just a normal dude. So, I think pe- people really like that. He got into vlogging at a good time. Vlogs are big, you know, big vlog guy. Yeah. Race week vlogs. Like people love them. They get a shit ton of views they go worldwide. Like that's, yeah, you get, it's a lot of work. You got to really like to do it. Yeah. I was reminiscing with, uh, with old Nick Fox back, uh, from like, we went to China one time and we were, we were on the vlog game before vlog game and BMX was even a thing. So all you guys can, you know, fuck right off. We were doing it. <laughs> it's hard as shit, but it was a blast. And we're never going to do it again, but, I'm just, Why don't you bring it back? Why don't you vlog? I got enough on my plate right now, pal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was uh, like, if, when I was racing, there's no way I'd vlog a race weekend. It's hard. Like, so that's yeah, like, like these guys like uh, Jay and uh, Jeremy Smith and uh, Big Q, Quillen, like they do all those videos of the races. Those are hard to do. Yeah, I, I didn't care about anything besides racing. Like, I didn't have the energy to spend on other stuff. So I wasn't the person to do that. And I think, yeah, like it. Yeah, like those guys, it's it's a lot of effort, like, you know. Because I was, I mean, personally, I'm very single-minded, so I, like I said, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But yeah, I mean, if if you if you can do it and still race well, I mean, it's because think about how after a race weekend, there's so much hype that just happened on the race weekend. If you see like Nick win in Argentina and you see his Argentina vlog, mm-hmm. everyone's gonna watch it. Everyone. Yeah. I do have a bo- bo- bone to pick about some of his videos. Oh, we'll get to in a sec here. Um, but you're right. It's like everybody wants, I love watching them myself. I love watching those people behind the scenes, videos, vlogs, yeah. like bullshitting behind like that kind of stuff. Like we did it at, uh, in Chula back in the day, we tried to do some for a bit yeah. and they were fun, but you're right. Like I can't do that all the time. Personally, I yeah. like to just talk with people in the moment. It's hard to remember to bring out the camera. It's hard to do all that stuff and be in the moment at the same time. It's tough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of people like it kind of like a hobby. I remember talking to Bodhi about it before. And Bodhi made some really good vlogs a few years ago at the races, kind of like Dirt Shark-esque. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about those the other day. I think I rewatched a couple from my old mind. So anyway, he like it's a way for him to like kind of like de-stress and not think about stuff. And he like really enjoys doing it. It's a hobby. And so that's pretty cool. And if that's something that distracts you from whatever, training and stuff, and it's, you know, <clears throat> something to do in your spare time, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, hundred percent agree. <clears throat> what I don't like about vlogs and some of these videos, and oh, unfortunately, you, you having a little adjustment there. Yeah, we're good. Keep going. All right. What unfortunately this happens to Neek a lot because he's just too fast. But I get tired of watching the GoPro videos of somebody that's in the lead. Now you can't. Oh, really? You can't fault the guy. <laughs> for being in the lead and winning and posting the video. People want to see that. But as a racer, I just the rant, that. just the rant. You know what? This is my rant. This is my rant. I've seen the track. I know what the track looks like. I don't want to see a video of you leading the race. All it is is a, a lap preview. We get a lap preview when we're riding the track. People can see those lap previews before the race. I want to see that action. Basically, I want to see a GoPro on Sylvan all the time because that dude is just duking it out all the time. Those are the GoPro videos I want to see. Not these winning races. Unfortunately, they're the ones that get all the views because it's a GoPro video of someone winning a race. But I want to see the action. I don't need to see you winning the lap by yourself. I don't need to see the track preview again. Stop fucking hole shotting. Stop hole shotting. And I can't, we can't blame anyone. Can't you know what's funny? I don't actually mind GoPro videos with no one in there in front. So, like, if it's so, it does look, it does, it does look better though. Like, it does look better. You know, it looks really good when Nick wore his GoPro in 2017 and, and I beat him and got on the podium and he didn't. That GoPro video looked really cool. That's the GoPro video we liked. <laughs> and, he got, and he got to follow Joris, me and Connor. Like that was my favorite Nick GoPro video ever. That's the best GoPro video of all time, isn't it? That's the best one. That's Tori's favorite. Put it that's, on the time That's probably the, the goat of GoPro videos. <laughs> Fuck, I look good. <laughs> <laughs> but people love it. So as we're tying it in, you, the the Rio GoPro video that you posted that's gone viral twice, dude. Now, twice, twice it's gone viral now. People love it, dude. How legit, die for it. 
the so the first time, well, this time we posted it, dude. It's gotten reshare on some big platforms, and it's gotten a shit ton of views and like impressions stuff. Now it's gone legit viral. The one I posted at the Olympics, obviously, when you post the Olympics, anything goes viral. But that one got like originally, like it got like two hundred fifty thousand views. I, yeah, it was crazy. Went legit. That one went like legit, legit internet viral. That's insane. Like Snapchat, I, I went on Snapchat. Sna- Snapchat was sharing the video I posted on during Rio, the GoPro video. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> Snapchat was playing my GoPro video. So cool. And like that track yeah. in that self, like people want. No one gets to ride that track. No one got to except for the, oh. the U24. Yeah. I can't remember the number. Yeah. You guys. Yeah. So that's like iconic and people just love that. You know, it's funny. I knew that was going to be huge. So for practice, I put my GoPro on, did the second straight one time, took it off and gave it to whatever Adam and just got the video. And then when it continued the rest of practice and posted it Epic. after. <laughs> and I, think I, was, I think I was the first person to post anything. And so obviously it just fucking exploded. Didn't, so di- we don't have to tell, but didn't you end up like posting it? not knowing if you're allowed to post it, taking it down and then throwing it back up again. So I posted it for like half an hour or like 20 minutes, like not very long, 10, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah. And then someone told me it wasn't allowed because the Olympics is like super weird about that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I took it down and then I texted Chris Westwood who works for Cycling Canada and was one of our reps with the Olympic team. And he said it was fine. So I reposted it. Yeah. Classic. Call for him. All right, caller number four, you're live on air with Coffee Chatter. Who are we speaking to? Uh, hey, how are you, Ben? Roger. Oh, is this Roger? Roger, we missed you, bro. It's been, where have you been, bro? We've been worried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's not talk about that. I've just been, you know, hanging out. What do you, what do you mean not talk about it? That's what we do on the podcast. We talk about things. We need to talk Literally, about Literally, the only direction for a podcast is to talk, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's what it's for? What we do, what we do, bro. Roger, Roger, what's the latest? You taking up Cam lately or what? Uh, no, he's taking it on himself. Apparently today, I think he put his pinky through his own chain ring somehow. Or his chain. Oh shit. Yeah, I guess uh, Sousa and Jeremy Smith have to be better parents to him while he's down there in Florida. You're telling me Sousa and and, and Jay Smooth aren't aren't uh, good guardians, aren't good influences? Come on, Jay Smooth. Come on, Sousa. Yeah, I know. Thing. I just don't understand <laughs> what's going on down there. It's just yeah, wild. Man, I hope he's okay. So you gotta take it easy on him for a while, then you can't be, you know, blowing him over a turn for the next bit. But I mean, that that T in Tulsa is looking real promising for Cam. All right. Speaking of Tulsa, are you going? Uh, maybe. Perhaps. Are Are you, are you going, Terry? Yeah, bro, I got a title to win. The Penix is out. We're even lighter than before. We got a few weeks to try and piece something together, and we'll be fine. You'll be, fine. You'll be good. You, you don't need to piece anything together, Terry. You just need to – all you need is a first straight, and then you just need to well, go the black mode. Well, first and foremost, my abdomen needs to get pieced together slightly after the appendix surgery. But, um, no, you're right. After that, no, just, yeah, just go for it. Just, I, mean, I mean, if you just go – Left instead of right. I mean, I feel like they can't catch you, right? Absolutely. So, Roger, we asked Michi, but who do you call for the double A win at the Grants for the title? <sighs> I don't know. You got to throw. You got to throw a name out there. You got to throw someone in the on the card. Uh. I mean, it can change by the time we get there. But who's your pick right now? Who's my pick right now? Not Connor. Oh wow! No. Why? Anybody but Connor. Wow. I don't know. I just, I'm not impressed by him right now. I'm just not impressed by him leading up to Grands right now. Okay. okay. Who, who are you impressed with? To be honest, I don't know. It, I'm, I don't know right now. <laughs> I'm up in there. All I know is not Connor. All right. Well, we got a couple weeks. Maybe he can change your mind. I don't know what, what your issue, what his issue is or your issue with there, but, you know, maybe he can change your mind. I mean, I feel Roger, like- where, where- I was gonna say, Roger, where are you from? I like I like your accent. Uh, I don't have an accent. Well, you Instead of Connor, you're, you're Canner. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I think uh, I don't know. I think I think Wood can uh, can uh, really put it on the heat of Connor, and I think Connor might crack. 
You're throwing the wild card in there with the a Cam Wood, basically the rookie. Well, they just they just gotta wait till you're in the class, bro. Then you're just blowing up everybody. Yeah. Just give them a one-way ticket to Cracker Barrel after racing. <laughs> bro, they're gonna be out there in full goalie suits trying to avoid me. Well, yeah, they are. We, we'll have a little Grand's T-Bone last turn actions, put some of the turns. We, turn. So we'd love to see it, Roger. We'd love to see it if you're going. No, we don't need the thir- third turn. We need the first turn, and that's all. That's that should just like <laughs> all right. <laughs> the finish line on this after the first turn, and the whole the whole shot on the first on the sec first jump in the second straight that should be the finish line. All right, Roger, you're gonna be our correspondent at the Grands, okay? I am. I should have been yeah, you're gonna be our- of Loserville in Kentucky. You're gonna be our correspondent. You're gonna be our correspondent. Okay. Kentucky don't matter. We're just worried about the grands now. We're looking ahead. Looking ahead. We're looking ahead, bro. Okay. Um, anyway, bro, thanks for calling in, bro. We missed you. Don't, don't, don't leave us hanging, man. We get worried we don't hear from you for a while. <laughs> All right. I'll try to call in more. <laughs> All right. Okay. Take care, bro. Later. Miss you. Miss you too. All right. Thanks, Love you, Roger. Roger. Roger's a huge coffee chatter guy. Huge. He's our grand correspondent. Huge coffee chatter guy. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he's good. in, you know. Yeah, um, let's get into Ariel's post because yeah. that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was that's one of the posts when you're just on your little morning scroll or whatever, and you see it, and then you just stop in your tracks and read. It. Yeah, you read it. I haven't, I never read through. I don't read through these things when I just do the scroll. If I like the photo, I give it a like, check it out, give it a quick one. But that one really got some attention because um, there's there's a series, there's reasons to have attention around it. So the Sylvan social media check-in, Ariel's post. Do you want to explain the post a little bit for everyone that maybe didn't see it? Sure, I'll read it. Okay. USA BMX, I love you. You raised me and I will be forever grateful. But I'm super bummed you won't let Peyton ride or race the pro women at Grands this year. I raced my first pro Grands at 16. I'm pretty sure at least post 11 won her first women's pro title at 16. I get that the rules have changed largely because of UCI rules and I've read your 2020 rule book, but seeing as Grants is in a UCI race and there's no junior class provided, I don't see the harm in letting Peyton race the pro women's class, especially since you already let her race pro open at Maryland, Indiana, and Rockville this year. In January, she'll be categorized as elite and fighting for a spot on the Tokyo team by missing out on racing pro at the greatest race on earth is hurting her professional development. I'm guessing Lexi Cobley and Molly Simpson would love to race the pro women's as well. So I guess... Yeah. Um, so obviously, because the like UCI rule, obviously it's age, not choice when you turn elite. So generally, that's why you wouldn't be able to race. But in this instance, because I mean, um, Payne's already raced Pro Open. Uh, it's not a UCI race, uh, I believe, right? Yes. So that's my big my big ticket item. Yeah. Know. If it's not a UCI race, yeah. Yeah. So if it's elite, understandable. Unfortunately, you can't race. Uh, if you're, yeah. you can't race elite unless you get bumped up. That's it, it. Is what it is. And if there was no junior class at the event, well, that's just your shit out of luck, unfortunately. But if yeah. it's USA BMX Grands where they do double A and uh, pro women, well, then I I think you should be is allowed to. I mean, move up to the class if you're old enough. If if you're basically 15, 16, you should be able to go up to elite or to pro. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, like I said, she's already raced pro open. So technically she's already raced pro this year. So what's the difference then? Like at this point, especially they're not being a UCI race. Like, yeah, I think she should, they should be able to. Yeah. Why not? And even Elise commented on it and said, she thinks she, they should be able to. Yeah. I don't think her being like her racing the pro-ams to me makes any difference because the whole idea it's of not a pro-am, pro-am though. It's not a pro-am. It's pro open. Okay. Well, so it's an, it's an, it's pro it's, it's an open of all the pros. So it's pro class. So you can't race it if you're amateur, technically. No, it's pro open, yeah. So elite oh. women, or like, yeah, it's a pro, double A, and pro women. So it's yeah, it's oh, an okay. open. Of, it's an it's an open of the pros. Okay, so you're basically calling the girl a pro, but then she can't race women pro at the grands. Like what? Yeah. So yeah, that is what? that is honestly does that is. What are we sense. doing here, people? What are we doing? We need to lock this shit up. What are we doing? Yeah. 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 So if you're racing a pro open, that means you're technically up into the pro class. If they're going to make an exception, it doesn't matter. If you've opened up the, the door to making exceptions, unfortunately in life, people take advantage and it's how it should be. If you open up the door to letting her race pro open, she should be, be allowed to race pro at the grants. Yeah. So why, why is she allowed to race? Why is she allowed to race pro early in the year, but not pro at the grants? It makes no yeah. sense, especially because neither of them are UCI races. 
Yeah. And it's like, obviously I'm sure at the small race, the, the pro open race, I bet you there wasn't very many people. They needed another girl. She wanted to race. They're like, let's just let her do it. They think it's going to be no big deal letting her race this pro open race because they need another girl in the class, basically maybe to make the class. Now it's backfired. Now, now you got the girls wanting to continue to race pro because that's what they do. They're junior elites. They want to race the pro class. They want to do that now with grands and they're not allowed to. You, yeah. people, whoever, I, I mean, I don't, we're not pointing fingers at anyone because I'm sure they just have a rule book that they're following rules and that's, it is how it is. But a hole has been dug and they're just digging it deeper now with allowing them to race pro open and now not being able to race grants. I don't think there's any rule that says they probably can't, to be honest, because it's not a use race or anything. Um, I'm just scrolling through the comments here, but yeah, pretty much like, everyone's in support of letting them race. Elise and Mariana have commented. TB's come, like a lot of people have commented. Damn sure there's there's got to be a rule of like age of what age you can be. You have to be to turn up into the pro class because that's there always is like a rule. You have to be. I I think for a. Pro, I don't know if there is. There definitely is because you can't just be twelve and be like, oh, I'm going to sign up for pro. No, no, no. But Peyton's what? Peyton's how old? Is Peyton. Uh, sixteen, seventeen. I don't know. She's junior, seventeen probably. So she's but uh, she's turning elite next year, so when she'd be eighteen then, wouldn't she? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. She probably. Be so eight. she's a, she's a so yeah. Obviously, she's old enough. Yeah. So you think um, like, she's already raced pro this year. So we someone, if you know the age of what you have to be to technically to be pro women class, call in and tell us because first of all, it's probably an age, but it's probably like, you'd think the age would be like 15 or 16 years old to be able to turn pro. Yeah. yeah. And she's 18. You're base. you're junior elite. You are a junior elite. You're a pro race the pro class. <laughs> yeah. It's not UCI. Like I said, and I raced pro this year. I think that's the biggest thing. They already raced pro this year. So what, like why, there's not real reason for them to not let them race pro at the grands, I think. What are they going to race if they don't? Like, do they race their age class still? Good question. So like, if they, if they race their age class, so what, then they race pro earlier this year and they just go back to amateur. And what is that right either? Well, it's not right. That's actually, that's actually not fair to the other girls in the class. No, unless they, unless you, well, I mean, I don't really think there's any, Fairness, unfairness. I mean, that's like Con- okay. Connor's going to race elite. He's racing nineteen to twenty-seven at the grands. Well, no, I think I think it's different than that. She's technically an amateur. If she yeah, is, but my my point being is like you should it, normally you can't just go pro back to amateur. Like, no, exactly. So obviously they're they're doing the opposite. They're like, oh, we just let you go up to pro. But I wonder, do you think they? I don't know. I'm, we're just we're making shit up in my head where I'm like, <laughs> Oh, maybe they just said it was a pro am instead of pro open. That's why they let her race. And she's still an am, but it wasn't, it was pro open. It was pro open. Yeah. Huh? Speaking of pro open back in the day, all the double A's used to race pro open and race two classes and make pretty good money. Did you know that? Uh, I didn't actually know. So there's three, there was three ways for double A's to make money. There's pro pro open and pro cruiser. Hmm. Learn something new every day. Yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, so got a lot of guys would race pro open just because it means cash. Get cut off in pro, go to pro open, win that one, go race cruiser, have half the class in pro cruiser class, maybe go win some money there. Pretty good. Pretty good. No, seriously, yeah. There's pretty good opportunities to make money back in the day. Like Yeah, that's solid. Probably 15, you know, not even 15 years ago, but yeah, like 2000s. Yeah. Huh. Way back in 2000s. Way, way back then. That's insane. Yeah, I mean... Because even if you didn't make the double A, man, you go win pro open and make, I don't know how much it was, five, seven hundred bucks. Yeah. Now Why not? you could go to the grands, you could uh, race your three laps in the pro class on the one day, get, uh, get motoed and see you later. Bye bye. Go yeah. home. <laughs> um, I saw Sylvan here. You have wrote down as a playoff idea. Uh, yeah. So uh, we got it. We got into the discussion. First of all, let me just let you know, T, I know you probably already know. I'm not going to France again. <laughs> oh my god i was i was gonna ask you so what's the, what's the update on uh i was you know what this past week i was watching the, i just like whatever look at the news and whatever yeah and i, I just see europe's going into lockdown and i was like just chuckling myself picturing you <laughs> picturing picturing you going to france so i boy, I, told, I still got my flight book i gotta i gotta cancel that flight i still haven't boy did that es- boy did that escalate a lot in a week huh unbelievable that was like literally two days so the whole thing, it went from me going to not going to you guys convincing me to go. And I was got everybody on board. I told everybody, told, told Robert, told Adam, told the parents, I'm like, I'm going to France. I told Romain, he was on board. He's like, going to France. Literally, I think it was the next day or two days later, Sylvan texts me and he's like, uh, bro, if you can go to Florida, go to Florida. You shouldn't come here. 
I was like, what do you mean? Like, you just told me to come. And so I instantly checked the news, saw they're going on lockdown. I was like, damn it. That was, so are, they, are they, are they full lockdown again or what? I don't think it's the same as earlier this year. They're still allowed to go to work and do that kind of stuff. But so they have their camp in France or at the center. And I heard that, that they're, they're still doing it because they're technically counting that as work as their job. So they're doing that. But when they go home, they, they're on lockdown, I think. Sick. Yeah. So oh, that that's was, super fucking cool. <laughs> that was the straw was yanked, not going in again. So that changed. Yeah. So are you doing anything else? You're just going to stay home. Um, I've talked to Joris a bit. I got to touch base with him, see what his plans are. Maybe I go down there for a bit, but, um, with how, how late all this is, I'm kind of over it. We'll see what, see if I go train with Joris for a bit and that's about it, but I don't know now. God, yeah. so shit. Yeah. It's absolutely. Just, like, <laughs> yeah. I'll put in a just, blender there for like a week of what I'm doing. Going, not going, going, not going. Probably so excited to finally leave Canada too and just go somewhere new. I was so stoked when I booked the flight, got bummed. When you guys convinced me, like, I was hyped. My heart was racing that when I was <laughs> I was like, Dad, we're, we're, we're doing it. We're doing <laughs> I was like, I said, I was like, I'm, fuck it, I'm going. I'm doing this For shit. 24 hours, James was going to sell the frats. <laughs> <laughs> I was back, baby, for 24 hours. I was going. And then my dreams got crushed again, and I'm not going. And um, that, is, yeah. that is devastating. That is devastating. Absolutely, Absolutely devastating. Um, but circling around here. So as I was talking to Sylvan, I don't know if it was that day or not. Apparently I was talking about the playoffs and one of our radio shows, maybe it was the last one. And my playoff idea was very confusing by the sounds of it, but he threw out the idea to me that if they wanted to have a, some kind of playoff format, they could do something different where they invite, let's say eight or 16 riders. I can't remember what he said, but I'm throwing out eight or 16 riders. Say you invite them to Papendal for a week and you put on, or maybe it's three days, who knows? And then you, but you do events. So you have timed straightaway events, say a second straightaway timed event, a third straightaway only timed event. You do maybe a half lap timed event. You do a time trial event and then a race event. And you could do that all combined for like an overall winner. For what race? What time? Just, just be for like a playoff, a fun event, some kind of like, um, I don't know, select rider event. An, uh, an individual or I don't know what they, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking. I'm getting a little flustered right now. T. <laughs> oh boy. Is this idea not going to work for so many reasons? <laughs> what do you mean? What? I think it'd be great okay, for one. So you get the top eight, 16 guys in the world and they're just going to fly for this playoff thing. Yeah. Okay. Gonna, yeah. So you're gonna, gonna, so, so, so Connor is just going to fly from Vegas to Papandal for a random weekend to do this playoff format. For like no real money and no, there's no one there watching and it's just, okay. No, but yeah. you could get this, you could start selling TV contracts or YouTube contracts. You could sell sponsor contracts to this to get the event going. Look at the CrossFit games. I mean, it's a huge CrossFit is huge. It's not BMX, but I'm just saying they have like three events in one day and they're short events that are just on TV slash on YouTube live stream somewhere. You do the same with this. You do 30 minute timed action on the second straightaway people going balls out down the second straight get the fastest time possible you do the same thing on the third straight let's say an hour later another 30 minutes of that you could be live streaming those things while they're going and or you could cut them paste them for tv later on like i think you could do it you know what would happen if we did if bmx did this <laughs> what's that 16 guys would go to pop and bell and they just have a track session well, I mean, yeah, it would start off like that, but then it starts casual. And then the problem is there's not the demand. There's not the demand or viewership to watch it. Like no TV would could, TV. Like there's not really picking up world cups and stuff. So why would they pick up this? Cause it's, it's, a. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to be pest. I don't want to sound negative because no, I know. Where I, don't, I don't, I don't think it's like a bad idea, but I'm just thinking realistically it's what TV sports, station or whatever is going to. Yeah, no, I see the, yeah, I see the logic. And I, I'm sure if you streamed it on YouTube, BMX goes around the world to watch. Like if BMX Live TV did it, mm -hmm. but I mean, there could be like, constant action. That's no one's what thinking. No, like, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't see this idea working at all. I think it's a, that's a very bad idea. And I think 16 people would go to Papandale, have a track session, try and get fastest yeah. times. They stream a bit on YouTube, and that's it. 
Well, maybe we just, maybe it's like the, uh, the FedEx cup in golf when, you know, it's just all up for money. Maybe somebody forks up the money for this, just eight people, just eight. Then watch these people go balls to the wall to get this big money cash. I know I would watch it. If I wasn't there, I'd be watching it. Yeah, I would too. It's cool and new. I think it's a cool idea and it's new. It's something different. Do you think people in Papua or in Holland would go watch? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I would, probably. I enjoy like track sessions, trying to see who can like racing the timers down straightaways and watching other people do it too. I think there could be potential. I don't see the demand for it. I don't think there is. Um, no, I don't see the demand for it at all. But may, I, you know what? I'm just trying. Not, not, so it's, it'd be like a skills competition. Essentially, but it would be like a yeah, a, a speed, a speed competition. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Okay, maybe. And I could have explained it completely different than Sylvan explained to me because that was a while ago now. But I'm trying to remember it, trying to explain it, and I think it would be cool. Maybe that's my problem is I just think it would be cool instead of actually TVable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, side note, wanted, I was gonna say you want to true and false soon. I just remembered. Yeah, let's get into the true or false in just a moment. Um, Hugo Oliveira in the YouTube chat line, uh, he was, when we was talking about the GOAT, he said, same question for the girls. In our opinion, which girl do we think is the GOAT and who's the fastest? I would say Mariana for sure is the GOAT. Yeah. I think I'm questioned. Okay. Two Olympic golds, she won an ABA title, won the world championships a bunch. How many worlds has she won? Rides answer BMX forks. Answer BMX get yours today. Get yours today. How many uh, she won? I actually question. don't know. Let me look so it up. She, right. Let me look her up. Right. I have the link. Honestly, it's a, it's pretty much the same comparison as Elise and Mariana. Mariana Maris was similar, and Elise and Sam are really similar. Like Elise is probably one more, mm -hmm. and definitely won unbelievable amount of USA BMX and ABA titles. But I think internationally, Mariana's the person. Has Mariana won junior women once or twice? Who cares for junior really? I know, but the world championship wins on the stats and BMX results. It just says Oh, uh, they would include junior. Yeah, they include it. And it says but, four. So I don't Mariam didn't win worlds as a junior. She did? Didn't. No, really? No, because she would have been junior in China and Adelaide. Yeah, she win. Okay. Oh, did she, did she who won junior in Adelaide? She must have won. No, who won? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck, I don't know. Junior women at 2009, I have no clue. Who would have won? I actually don't know if Mariana did or not. I, I, wasn't think, I wasn't thinking about junior women's class or the female people at that age, probably. Too. <laughs> Valentina won in China in 2008. I don't know who won in 2009. Okay, well, she has four. She won 2011 Copenhagen. She won that in Elite Now. Okay, I don't even remember that. Okay, she won twenty fourteen. Yeah. She won twenty sixteen. And that's it. So she must have won a junior title. And Elise won what seventeen and last year? Yeah. Laura's won how many has Laura won? Twenty eighteen? Uh oh. Oh, Laura's only won the one, yeah, twenty eighteen. Only the one. <laughs> I know it's um, that's because just yeah. so many other wins in world cup. But yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would say Mariana. Yeah, for sure. All around. Yeah. No question. Yeah. I would call her the goat for no, no doubt as well. Do we have a, yeah. yeah, the fastest racer? Like who was the fastest of the women? I think Mariana would be the fastest. You think so too? Hey. Oh, we got a little cutout from T here. We're going to give it a moment. Um, are you back? T? Oh, we're back. All right. Can you hear good. me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'll have to, Maybe I'll I didn't. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I was like, if I'm still alive, I don't want to just be sitting here looking like an asshole, not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, who do you think is the fastest then? <clears throat> I have a. I have a hard time deciding that. I would. I could go for Elise because I think she's fast on all tracks. I could go for Laura because her speed has shown that she can still pull and win. But Laura doesn't have that visual look of just all-out speed. She's too smooth. And that's weird to say. How can somebody be too smooth? But Laura doesn't look like she's going as fast as she is. So it's hard to pick her for that. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I, I would say Mariana is too. Yeah. Hmm. Who do you think? Fastest. I don't 
don't know. I don't know. You got to say, just, I don't know. Um, who do I see? And I just think, wow, that person is fast. Um, oh, I'm going to go Laura. All right. I, I'm completely right. contradicting what I just said. I'm just going to got to be two different people though. I go Laura. And this is the same thing with the right. Right, Michael James Stewart and the Sam Maris because James Stewart won more races, but he's not the GOAT. Same with the girls and the guys. Okay, true. Anyway. All right, true and false. I got really good true and false, and I'm excited to say them. Did someone say true or false? Okay, moving on. <laughs> right, these people, these may be my best true and falses I've ever had. Really? I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have said that because now people are expecting something huge. They're expecting greatness now and you have to deliver. It's so hard to deliver now once you've said that. I know. So ready? I'll go first. Yeah, let her rip. Eddie Clarte signed a deal with a CrossFit gym to shoot a promo video. Uh, true. I teach a CrossFit guy. He's gym. He gym sims a lot. Of, they love CrossFit. Yeah, true. Sorry. Oh, you froze again. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I got Terry looking at me just with a blank stare. Oh, James, face. I don't know if you can hear. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm back. I'm back. It was You're back. Oh, my God. That gives, gives me anxiety when it freezes. <laughs> <laughs> so I answered, but what I said, it's true. And I said it's false. I made it up completely. Ah, oh, <clears throat> I got it wrong. Damn it. Okay. All right. That was a good one. That was a good one, though. I, that's a good one. That, could, that got me easily. Um, I've been ba- I've bamboozled you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bamboozled. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I'm really concerned that I did this one last time, but I'm, so I'm I'm gonna start with it. I thought that was gonna be your true and false. You saying I'm really concerned? I was like, wow. Well, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first one here. Um, Sylvan goes down uh, a frame size smaller when he goes to Saint Etienne. He uses his other bike that's a little bit smaller. False. You're right. That's false. <laughs> what is that surprise? But that seems like a bit of a stretch changing your bike. It, is, it, does um, seem, it doesn't seem like a bad idea for a tight little track. Yeah. All right. Connor and Laura usually do a Friendsgiving with all their friends at a cabin in the mountains after the Grands for Thanksgiving. In the mountains? Yeah. Thanksgiving, Connor and Laura, they love the mountains. I'm going to go true. Yeah, they actually do a Friendsgiving with their friends. Nice. Got it right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was a good one too, wasn't it? That was a good one. That was a really good one. That's some personal information that you know from being friends with them. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. Next one. Drew baked six pastries during her quarantine at home. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. That's a lot of pastries. That's, it, it seems like something Drew would do. Like just yeah, bake and what, just, just bake for fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dave Vandenberg lost a bet to Neek at their national champs and can't eat pancakes for a month. The bet wasn't based on results, but it was a bet. Oh, I no, no, this is absolutely false because I saw him eating pancakes the day, the night that he won. That's false. Oh, I thought I was going to get you. <laughs> nice. Got it right. That was a good one. That was, yeah, that was a good one. That could have, that could have been a bet they would make though. Cause Dave loves pancakes. It sounds so believable. It does sound so believable. Um, next one for me. Sylvan has never won the overall French cup. True. True. That's true. Yeah. You wouldn't really guess it, but he's never done the full series apparently. So he's never won it. Yep. Yep. Um, Sherry Landrum originally started BMX mania because his wife said he was manic about BMX and that's where he got the idea from for the name. You are really coming in hot with these questions this time. (laughs) (laughs) um shoot uh that's false you made that up oh yeah i was so sure i was gonna get you that one i got it i put so much effort into these ones these were so good those are great ones those are really good though you still went three for four fuck i know i'm pretty good i feel i feel pretty good about that those ones yeah that's Uh, really good last one for me uh when carlos was in florida little magician he started running the answer car of tires i'm looking at you to see if i can tell <laughs> it's false yeah it's false <laughs> i was like it might be i was like maybe you saw his bike and you saw the answer cars 
Maybe, but I told him he should start. Maybe, but he he said no. He said no. <laughs> yeah, because he's got other deals. But he's an answer BMX guy, so you know. Get answer yours. BMX. Yeah, he's got the daggers, or he's got yeah. He got the answer right. yeah. yeah. Get yours today. All right. That's the uh, true and false. Segment. I think I think we both went three for four, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I think we both did. Okay, sorry, that was already going. I didn't know how to stop it once it started going. <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, get into the one words now, or what? Um, I think so. I did. I want to bring this one up. Okay. One more. One more. This is a. I would call this a fun topic. Okay. I wish that BMX had a BMX hat trick. Do some, explain. So I wish we had some sort of commonly known hat trick because other sports, it's so cool when hockey like a players grand just, slam. They get, or yeah, baseball players, they get a grand slam. Hockey players, they get the hat, tra- hat trick. They get the Gordie Howe hat trick. There's a, in soccer, you can get a hat trick, all these things. BMX, you don't really have anything like that. But I think we should make something commonly known. So I'm thinking either like a season hat trick where you get three World Cup wins in a row or not in the same season. I, I kind of feel like it's got to be in, the row, in a row. You could get the, like a track hat trick. So if you win Papendal um, three years in a row at the same track, so at the same Papendal, you win it three years in a row, then that could be a hat trick. Or it could just be like the career track hat trick, where if you, in your career, if you win it three times, that's a hat trick. I think we should have a grand slam, like Like golf or tennis and stuff do. I, that like as a race, like a grand slam. No, no, not as a race. Just like they say, like the grand slam is when you win, like, the biggest event so grand slam and bmx would probably be if you won the usa bmx title the world championships and say the world cup title boom that's you just have yeah that's the grand slam you have like in the year you have the grant or the career grants the career grand slam would be done oh, in your career. terry came in big with this when we're scrapping the hat trick idea we're calling the grand slam the career grand sure. slam or the year grand slam. that's just huge yeah it's, it's the grand slam or the career grand slam same as golf and tennis and stuff yeah so if you so here's the debate though, this is going on. This has been going on for years in Tiger's world. Is the Grand Slam holding all three titles at once in the same same calendar year, or is it doing them all within the same twelve months? Yeah, because Tiger, yeah, he held them all at the same time, but he won the Masters in a different year, the next year, but he won right. them all in a row. Yeah, Correct. yeah. yeah. Ooh, I think I think it counts as the Grand Slam. Yeah, like if someone. In BMX went, for instance, end of this state, for instance, someone in BMX 2021, they won the USA BMX title. Then 2021, they won the Worlds and the World Cup title. Mm -hmm. They won all the titles in a row. So I would say that's the Grand Slam. Yes, 100%. All right, I 100% agree. If you can put all all those trophies on your table at once in the same, you're the champ of those at the same time, that's the Grand Slam. 100%. Obviously, if you miss one and it went, like it doesn't count, but yeah. that would be the career grand slam. But if you win them all in a row, regardless of like the calendar year, mm-hmm. like in the same year, then yes. That would be a grand slam for sure. 100% would be a grand slam. You're an idiot. You're a fucking idiot if you don't. You're one of those old, crusty, old, crusty, miserable bastards that thinks no if you, if, if you don't. <laughs> well, you just, you're not in it. You don't know what you're talking about if you don't agree with that. No, you're just old, old guy media. I was thinking to say that old guy media crap. You're just old guy media walking around in like your, your trousers, super old and washed up and bitter about the world. <laughs> so now here's the question. Has it ever been done? Because. Uh, yeah, 20, yeah, 2012, Sam won world championships, world cup title, ABA title. He did it. Yeah, he did it. Yeah. Holy shit, we have somebody that just won the Grand Slam. <laughs> eight <laughs> years ago, coming in right now. <laughs> eight years ago, somebody won the Grand Slam, and it's officially, we're announcing it today. Round of applause, Sam Willoughby right. won the Grand Slam of BMX. Round of applause, Sam <laughs> Willoughby is the only one to have won the Grand Slam of BMX. Unbelievable. Wait, before I quote that and sound like an idiot, I think he's the only one. I, I think, I, let's, it's hard to think, it's hard to remember back now. Because this wasn't a thing until 12 seconds ago. (laughs) 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 European title doesn't count. It's got to be the USA BMX title. No. What happens if you're holding the Olympic gold that time too? You just had to go there. 
<laughs> you just honestly i i, I think the olympics is like a, a category yeah it's separate i think it's a category of its own like golf and tennis too 100 percent agree you're right i agree it's, a se- it's separate like with it's the olympics is kind of a different category because it's it's not i don't know how to say this it's not like the tradition of the sport 100 percent agree it happens once every four years yeah yeah, yeah. it's no, like no, i agree yeah, yeah. it's its own huge thing on its own but yeah, the, so obviously Maris would have to have the career Grand Slam. Mariana and Elise. Uh, has Elise won the World Cup title? I don't no, think she has. No. Okay. Let me let me look. I still have. No, I don't. I don't think she. I don't think she has. You don't think so, hey? I don't think so. Um. So Mariana would have the career Grand Slam. Sam, Maris, Connor, Joris. Doesn't say. They would all have the career Grand Slam. Career. Yeah. So Connor, Joris, Maris, Sam, Mariana, they have the career of Grand Slam. Uh, yeah. Mariana got the Grand Slam? The She's Grand won the ABA title, World Cup title, World Championship. Okay, but, oh, yeah, 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 okay. Career, career, not, yeah, yeah, career Grand Slam. Sorry, career Grand Slam. Sorry, I got mixed up. It, we got to, I got to make sure I, you know. What year did Mariana win the ABA title? I think it was like. Wasn't it 2012? I want to say it was. I want to say it was 2011 or 2012. I want to say it was that, yeah. Which who, who won the world in 2012 in women? Ooh, in 2012. This thing, why doesn't it go by year? This thing should really go by year. It's not. God, going I should. Year. I should so know this. Um, take a bet. What? I'm trying to think. Elise was winning. Crashed into the first corner. Oh, Magaly Poitier won. Oh, you're right. Yes, yeah, Magaly Poitier. Yeah. Yep. Yep, okay. Boy, is that a name from the past or what? <laughs> kind of feels like you just threw it out of nowhere. I know. So I, I like I like the fact that we've now established a career grand slam. It's pretty good. We have a career grand slam and we have the grand slam. So Sam's the only one to win the the grand slam. Yep. Insane. All right. I like it. Absolutely insane. So hold on. Who can potentially no, nobody can win the grand slam right now. No. Yeah, they, yeah, they could. We Connor. just we just discussed this. If Connor wins the grands, he wins the grand slam. He's not world champion. Oh, there's no world champion. <laughs> <for that. Yeah. laughs> Sorry. If I, he wins I'm the sure. grands though, and then he wins the worlds next year, then yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because technically, the world. Oh my god, dude, dude, what? dude. We could be just within history right now because Connor, if he wins the grands. He's two thirds of the way there. All he has to do is win the worlds next year, and he completely won the Grand Slam. And we, will, and will, you people, fucking heard it right here first. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Coffee chatter live, baby. You heard it here first. We might just start calling it the chatter Grand Slam. I think it has to. The uh, coffee chatter Grand Slam. We should, you know, we should make a we should make an award for the career Grand Slam. Okay, we're gonna have to send Sam a mug that says the the Grand Slam. I don't think does a career Grand Slam get a get a mug. I mean, it's a pretty fucking big deal. It's, I mean, but or we could just do it from here on. Like, if Connor does it, we could give him an award. It comes out of our pocket, buddy. Oh my. Okay. Side note. Okay. We what? didn't do. We didn't do chatties for this year. I've I've already been thinking about that. Um, I have ideas. Um, we'll we discuss talk, at the we, next the next business meeting. We have to discuss because we can't be doing the same we did last year. I'm thinking we might have to do best Instagram page of the of the the year or best Instagram content, some bullshit like that, because what are we, what are we supposed to do? Boy, are we scraping the bottom of the barrel without yeah. one? Eh? We might, maybe. Yeah, I know. We're just scraping barrels. I don't know what to do. Maybe we just, we just wait till next year. Maybe we just grab it. But I've been thinking about it. It's on my list. I started writing down ideas. So we'll, we'll throw it out there. We'll get to that housekeeping later. All right. All right. Um, I guess we'll get into one words. We got nothing else. Yeah. Let's get into one words. All right. All First right. One. I'll, I'll go France. Bullshit. Absolute <laughs> malarkey. Butch BS. You've been absolutely bamboozled by the French <laughs> government. <laughs> I have been bamboozled and I'm pissed about it. France. They're my second home for many years. I love France. Yeah, fair enough. It was for you, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, COVID. God, fucking up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. What is with this second wave we're getting? Just stop. I'm tired stop. of it. Stop. God. Like, 
just snap our fingers in 2021 and just let it be okay again, please. Stop. Lock it up. Lock it up, people. Lock it up. Yeah, I'm about that. Lock it up. Travel. I want to do it again. I'm a big home guy, but I'm ready. It's getting cold here. It's about to pour rain tomorrow, and I'm not stoked. Yeah. But it is what it is. Travel for you? You're traveling. I love travel, yeah. I miss travel. Well, I travel, but like I'm like basically home here, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, this one, which is going to change. I've wrote in hat trick. Career grand slam. Grand slam. Mm-hmm. Grand Slam. Unbelievable. I can't believe we, we, Connor is on the verge of getting the Grand Slam. If he wins the Grands, he's on the he's verge. A, he's got one more. He's won the Grand Slam. Yeah. But if, if someone else wins, then they, they're one third of the way there. Huge. Huge. True. Yeah. True. Is there anybody that needs this? Corbin, I guess. Corbin needs this if he wants the career Grand Slam. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> The grounds is huge. Corbin Correct. could win it, or Connor could be two thirds the way there. Are you shitting me? It's insane. That is like this is big news. It's almost like go Corbin now. <laughs> it's almost like Corbin. We want to see history. Like this is. He doesn't even know. Like he doesn't listen to. This he show. doesn't even know. Like the four or five people he's going to join with this. This is he wins. absolutely elite company. His back might get sore from these expectations. I don't know. <laughs> Might need a Cairo adjustment with the load they just got placed on his spine. <laughs> That's a lot of weight to be carrying on him right now. All right, Pro Gate Europe. Absolutely fantastic. Best gate in the world. If you're out there, you need a Pro Gate like Tuan does on his Supercross Hill. Yep. Pro Gate? Pro Gate Gators today. Gators today. Uh, winter. We don't really have that down here, you know? Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of missing, I'm actually kind of missing the cooler weather to wear, dude, I don't wear, I've like worn pants maybe a couple times. I don't wear pants here. There are so many of us, that like, I'm us that are just pissed at you right now. Dude, the pants might as well just be a prop in my dresser right now. It's insane because mine's shorts. Mine, I, shorts have been absolutely, like, I don't even wear them in the gym. It's cold. Like I brought a few pairs of pants and they're just fucking taking up space because they're useless. <laughs> I'm gonna start selling them soon. Like, what's the dude? Point? Seriously, yeah. I kind of miss the cold fall weather. Like, I don't miss I don't miss the rain and stuff, but like, kind of like cool, crisp fall weather. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, Cali. Oh, I, I think I just double taked. My bad. I was gonna say second home. Yeah, home here, home, home. Second home. That's a great yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, grands. One third of the Grand Slam. Fucking history. History in the making. The grand, <laughs> Justin Wall, if you're listening, the Grand Slam. The Grand Slam. The Grand Slam. We, this is coming right from the, the voices of Coffee Channel. This is a huge weekend. Monumental. Um, yeah, I owe you your team. Uh, Thanksgiving. Turkey. Yep. Hypertrophy. I hate it. Absolutely. It can fuck right off. I don't like it one yeah. bit. Yeah. I'm doing it right now. Don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, grinding. Oh, my gym sessions. Like I remember we used to gym in the off season, like December and stuff. They're fucking awful. That's yeah. That's exactly what grinding is. That's what I feel like I'm doing right now. So Definition of grinding. Yeah. I've switched. Or, me at the, or I was going to say, or me at the driving range, working on my, working on my shot shape. That's what I thought you were going to say, actually. I was I was expecting some kind of yeah that coming out. Yeah. Um, but that's it. That's one word answers. Um, I'm looking for the video to get into what's up next, T. Because you know what's up next. What's up next? What are you talking about? The golf check-in. The weekly, the weekly golf, golf. Oh, I thought we were done. I thought we had a golf check with Brandy. Oh, I guess we kind of did. Okay. Weekly golf check-in done. How's it back chipping and putting? That's what I was going to ask. How are we doing? What's, what, what are we doing with the, uh, the stomach? Are we, are we able to putt chip now? I feel pretty normal. Yeah, I see the doctor Wednesday. It's a virtual call with the doctor, so I got to FaceTime him, I think. Um, okay. My follow-up. But yeah, I went chipped and putted yesterday and today. Short game's pretty tight. Short game's pretty Absolutely. tight. like to hear that. Yeah. Very much like to hear that. Yeah. I was going to play this for the golf check-in if we needed to. but Oh, it's here. I love it. That's so good. We all know who we all who know who that is in the video. Where, where is that from? Uh, I, 
is that TPC? I don't know. It's Tiger when he got to, gets the hole in one. Oh, that's that's uh, 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 Phoenix Waste Management Open. Is it is it TPC like the waste? Yeah, management it's before, before they, they had, had the stands. Yeah, it's before they had the stadium, but that's the 16th hole. Yeah. Can you just imagine if the stands were there? It's insane. I know. It breaks my heart that he can't get that roar because that would be. I know. Insane. insane. How's that? What's your what's what's where are we at with your weekly golf check in? Um, played once a week. Well, I played this week, and then I played two weeks ago. Me and Ryan played a little. I played a two v two match against some of my buddies from school. I haven't played with before. We played them yesterday. Me and Ryan are just an unstoppable <laughs> team. Absolute. We just grind our asses out there. We were. I was just on a bogey train to start things off. Ryan was when working on a swing, so he was going through some stuff. We lost the front nine. We were down one after the front nine. So we played five, five, five. So five front. Five back, five overall. Five dollars. Yeah. Yep. Back nine was our nine. We started to grind even harder. We didn't make, we weren't making everything. But <laughs> it's we so funny. Making. Like James and our friend Ryan, I don't know, for people that obviously don't know, they fucking win every two versus two match. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so we gave our buddies, because obviously Ryan's really good. And we, so we gave my buddies like a few strokes on, I think we gave three on each, three strokes yeah. on each nine. So it was tight. And then we got it up to like uh, to two on the back nine, up two. And then so we won the back nine and the overall. I think we got it up to three, but yeah. Dude, I can't wait till I'm, I, when I'm back, I can't wait to play some 2v2 matches again. So much fun. I'm so excited. Play some Love. winter golf, just 2v2 out there in the fucking freezing weather. I so see. just bundled up. Can't feel a thing. I know. Like, yeah, living. All right. Well, I think it's all we got, people. I think it is. Come all right. Thanks, Evan. Thanks everyone in the chat for uh, or on YouTube live for joining. Thanks everyone for listening. This was a good, uh, good radio show. Thanks to the callers. It was fun to fun to chat BMX. We had some fun topics to go over today. I really liked it. Really enjoyed it. I love this chat. I love talking goats. I love I love talking Grand Slam. Now we're gonna Huge. be talking Grand. We're gonna be talking Huge Grand news. Slap for decades to come. I like. I love. Uh, I actually really love discussing different riders and talking. You know, pros and cons of both. Not pros and cons, but maybe like what strengths and weaknesses or whatever. Yeah. And comparing, I, I love diving into riders careers. I think it's really fun. I a hundred percent agree. And I think we could do this more. I also want to say that we are, we're working on getting ourselves a website. Um, yes, we are. We, we are. literally just started the conversation. So the process is just beginning where we're going to hopefully get a website coming 2021 where you can find everything coffee chatter in one place. So yeah. uh, keep it up. We are inching towards 200,000 downloads monumental some yeah that's pretty big that is- sorry i didn't mean to, i didn't mean to interrupt i was just excited i remembered no that's fine that's this is a big moment these are big yep. moments for coffee chatter yeah things yep. things are happening over the chatter things are happening stay tuned things are so yeah like tori said thanks for listening thanks for listening live thanks to progate europe winning starts with the great gate thanks to s squared answer bmx get yours today play more bmx get, get yours today baby i remember guys snap on green snap on green and uh what it is hit it hard